All right, hey, good morning, everybody. Now, today is the beginning of April. It's time to do a garden tour. And it's with a heavy heart that I'm going to announce this is probably the last video I'm gonna film um, for this channel. It's just getting to where everything is just too much. Um, and I think I need to step back. So the good thing is that today's April 1st and I'll be able to do the last video on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not going anywhere. Are y'all kidding? This is my passion, y'all. All right, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do this. All right, so April 1st, <laughs> there is a lot growing in this backyard since last this time last month. So, hey, I uh, hope everyone enjoys this one. Let's grow. Okay, so hey, let's start right here with the tomatoes. Now, I planted some determinate tomatoes in this pot, and they have really taken off. Blue cream berry tomatoes. Look those up on Baker Creek. These should be really pretty tomatoes, and I'm excited to see these determinate tomatoes grow. Uh, determinate tomatoes means that they only get to a determinate size. They don't get huge. They'll only get so big. So determinates are great. For containers i did a video on those last year on determinants and indeterminants which i'll put a link to right here okay let's come to the pepper bed now this is all a lysum so i'm just letting it grow because it's great to bring in beneficial pests but these peppers are all from seed that i've transplanted into this bed and they're all kinds of different peppers and and then of course i've got marigolds that are volunteer that are just coming up and i'm transplanting them all over the garden more peppers here now i finally have some peppers that i put seed that i planted in seeds in here and these are monster bell peppers right here that are finally starting to come up so if i get two i'll be happy i've got red bell i've got some red bell peppers right here that are finally starting to sprout and then some habaneros that are coming up right in here now this is thyme. These two plants right here are thyme. And again, that is a great plant to companion plant with your peppers. It brings in the beneficial insects that kill the bad insects um, that will attack your peppers. So companion planting is everywhere in this backyard. Now we're gonna come over here to the potatoes and look at the growth on these things. They are just going crazy. I am so excited. Now I will say in the last video, I said this bed right here were the pantry potatoes, but that's incorrect. These are the yellow uh, Yukon gold potatoes. The pantry potatoes are in this section and they have not come up yet. So this is actually the first time that I've planted pantry potatoes and they have not grown. So I'm not gonna replant potatoes in there. I'd be a month behind. And then when these are done, these beds are gonna be sweet potato beds. So I need these done when they're going to be done so I can start transplanting the sweet potato slips. But that's coming down the road. But yeah, these potatoes are doing great. And up here, we got the strawberry gutter bed. They're doing okay. I don't see them sprouting and trailing anywhere. Now, I will be completely honest, I did buy starts this year for this for the strawberries because the ones that i planted didn't do anything they were all duds and dead so these three strawberry starts or these three strawberry plants i did buy as starts even though this is the year of the seed here on this channel i had to get something in this bed to see if this thing's going to work for strawberries so forgive me but yes these these two and that one are all um I bought those all in a store. That's the only one that actually grew from the pack that I bought when I put these in. So um, again, sorry. All right, cilantro is doing great. I just planted more of the Baker Creek slow boat cilantro in this section. So we're gonna have plenty of cilantro. I'll be more proud of this pepper bed. All of these are jalapenos. And look at how much they have grown. These Five plants were all about that size last month when I put them in here. And as you can see, we already got 
flowers growing, which means we will have jalapenos on these plants very soon. And then habanero, monster bell peppers, that's fine. These two, this one's finally taken off. And then we got some hot banana peppers back there. I could not be more excited than I am about this asparagus. Look at the growth on these asparagus plants. That is so awesome. Now asparagus takes years before you can really start to harvest it and eat it and it grows the way that it's going to grow. So right now, this is the beginning. I just got to The first year, you just let it do its thing. The second year, you can kind of take some, a few of the asparaguses off, but not a lot. And by the third year, you should be rolling in asparagus. So, um, but yeah, that's the beginning of asparagus plants. Super excited. These are all these are all radishes that I've just let go to flower just to bring in beneficials. These are all going to be out of here um, very, very soon. Okay, I am super disappointed in this bed right here. Except these beans are doing good. These bush beans are going crazy. But this bed is bothering me. When I bought those seed potatoes, I also bought seed sweet potatoes. And I put them in this bed. And they haven't done anything. Like nothing. So if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, and you see seed sweet potatoes, my advice, don't buy them. They don't work. You need sweet potato slips uh, for sweet potatoes. All right, jumping over to this bed. These two plants are the single seed challenge plants for this channel. This is Tiny Elvis for the second grade classroom. This is Priscilla. And these plants, these, and these two tomato plants are just going nuts. And check that out right there. <laughs> More tomatoes on Tiny Elvis. That is so awesome. And look at the crazy shape of these things. It is so cool. The first tomato is right there. Oh, it's got a bug on it. Look at that. There is an example of why you get in the garden. That pest has got to die. And it will. In fact, I will be right back. Okay, everybody. We are back from pest execution detail. That pest is dead. But, like I was showing, these are a crazy shaped type of tomato, and I am so excited for this plant, because it is doing so good. And again, that is the second grade classroom's single seed challenge plant. These are all basil plants, because basil is a fantastic companion plant Four tomatoes so through here we have a lot of onion that I wanted to plant around the two tomato plants just to help We've got corn growing doing really good and these are all eggplant starts all different varieties of eggplants that I started from seed that I was finally able to transplant out here the mint the mint and the mint is just going crazy because of course it's a weed it's the bane of my existence for this bed because you can't get rid of it once it's in your garden. And again, I never knew that the first year that I planted. And now I have mint forever. Luckily, I have a good friend who loves mint in her water. She is always going to be supplied. Got a jalapeno plant from last year. It's doing really good. Hasn't put on any fruit yet. Hasn't put on any peppers yet, but that's coming lots of garlic onions are going crazy this section of the carrots really haven't taken off I'm, I'm a little surprised usually this area does really really good with carrots but um maybe i need to put something else in there I'm not sure elephant garlic right here which i'm actually need to the elephant garlic i actually need to check and see if they're done because they actually might be done I'm not sure yet We've got eggplants right here and then lots and lots and lots of squash and zucchini that are all starting to come up. Lots of volunteer basil that are just coming up from last year, going crazy. Different types of alyssum right here. And then we've got beans and peas that are just going nuts. One, section, one thing about this section of the garden right here, with all these flowers and basil plants and everything, is... I just went ahead and planted the seeds in between all that to see if the squash plants or the zucchini plants would be strong enough to push up through. It's kind of an experiment. And as you can see right here, the zucchini plants 
are strong enough. They have pushed right up through all of this craziness. So for the most part, I'm gonna leave this section alone, at least until summer when it's time for okras. I've just gone ahead and left this Brussels sprout plant in just to see what it'll do. It's not dying and it's still putting on Brussels sprouts. That is literally the only brassica that I have ever been able to grow that has actually got to any kind of size. So I'm kind of just gonna let it do its thing, see where it goes. Um, I'm actually very surprised that that thing is still alive. Garlic, more garlic. If you haven't been able to tell, I'd love me some garlic. Carrots that are doing good. This section here is kind of how I expected that other section to look with carrots, but it's really not, they're not doing as good as I thought. Some carrots that I've just let go. We'll see what they do. More volunteer basil that I will be transplanting everywhere. Now this entire bed, along with that mailbox, I have to get taken care of and transplanted, which will be done very soon. And then right here, I'm very excited about these. These are cantaloupes. Now, they're not as many growing as I thought there would be. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven cantaloupes in this little section. The good thing about that is when they start to vine out and just go crazy, seven cantaloupe plants or vines should be plenty. And I'm going to trellis them going this direction. Hopefully they'll do what they did last year and they'll go up into there and go over the fence because this neighbor loves cantaloupe, which is the only reason I'm actually growing cantaloupe this year because I like to give a lot of my harvest away. So. Um, Okay, over in this corner, if y'all remember from last month's video, I planted beans and peas. Well, it turns out I only planted peas over here, different types of peas. So we got some snow peas over here, if I'm correct, and then some uh, regular peas right through here. But they are doing really good. I mean, look at the growth on those. And then we got peppers. My very first pepper of the year is right there. And more peppers doing really good in that pot. More garlic, because I had no clue what to put in this, and a lot of onion, because again, I had no clue what to use this for. Okay, so we're almost done, everybody. I've been kind of flying through this video. Uh, I wanna show this bed, because this was originally, last year I built this to put blueberries in, blueberry bushes, because there's no shade right here. The sun in July and August just literally cooked everything in this bed. Now the blackberries did really good. The blueberries, <laughs> no, they're all dead. So right now, I really don't know what to do with this bed. I've kind of just turned this into a, uh, just kind of a catch-all. So you've got peppers from seeds right here that are really doing good. These are a black Hungarian pepper. Almost look like jalapenos, but they're not. And they are finally coming up. And I put, I planted seed in here. I did not transplant. These are strictly all from seed. Got rosemary, another pepper plant right here, another pepper plant. The cucumbers that I planted along the back there are actually starting to do pretty good. Hopefully they'll start trellising soon and getting big. These two are the blackberries, and then I got a serrano pepper plant right over there that's just starting to put peppers on. So that's that bed. This next bed I am very excited about because, man, things are doing really good in this bed. Okay, everybody, this bed right here is the tomato bed. As you can see, tomato trellis is on, secure, everything's good to go. I gotta order more of these, but I've got time. These are all still really small. But this whole bed is nothing but indeterminate tomatoes. Now the difference from the determinants that are in that pot is they will grow to an indeterminate size. They can get six, eight, 10 feet tall. That's why you need a trellis system of some kind for an indeterminate tomato plant. Very important to know the two differences of tomato plants. So all through this bed, I've got a lot of things going. We've got obviously marigolds, basil everywhere, and I'm gonna put more basil in as we're going. So for the tomato plants, I planted three plants of each type of tomato. So I am going to have a lot of tomatoes. So as you can see, they're all doing good. This is here to help block the sun from that plant because that plant wasn't doing good. 
Over on the other side, you can see all the basil and flowers. That's a Carolina Reaper plant right there. More peppers that I planted from seed. Another pepper plant. And as you can tell, more tomato plants are all through here. My second Carolina Reaper plant right there. More tomatoes, pepper, more tomato plants. And out of all of them, I've only lost one tomato plant right there. And I went ahead and left that in just to show you all. And then these I planted a month ago and they were all about that size. So in a month, you can see how much these tomato plants have grown pretty soon. Put them trellis to these twines and then I will start the single vine method of growing determinate tomatoes on all of these. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of dedication and time to really take care of your tomato plants. But that's the whole reason I built this trellis system. I wanted to do a legitimate tomato bed and that is exactly, and that is exactly what this bed is. And I'm very excited about it. So uh, yeah, this bed is doing good. Still have work to do. I'm gonna put basil all through this thing, especially once the tomato plants start to really grow. Okay, this entire section is the last section. So let's come in here to the wall trellis. So you can see, we've got this trellis system set up along the wall. And I have nothing but vining plants all through here. These are the Chinese red long bean noodle plants. And they're starting to really, they're about to start trellising. We've got cucumbers, the big Armenian cucumbers, the Rampancotti zucchini, which are my favorite beans that are just look at I mean look at the growth on these things everything in these beds were planted on the exact same day and you can see the beans have just really 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 taken off coming on down yard long oh, these are the suko long cucumbers and then moonflowers right over there I am so excited for those things to grow the moonflower is supposed to be able to get like seven inches in diameter the, the flower itself, the vine about 20 feet, and they open at night. So that will, my plan is to have the moonflowers come up this and then come all across these lights. I don't know how it's gonna look, but either way, I don't care. I'm excited. I wanna see those moonflowers blooming at night. That is just gonna make this all fantastic. Okay, again, this bed was all melon beds. We've got, as you can see, we've got different melons plants that are growing really good they are just really taken off here in the last honestly in the last week they've just really blown up this is a volunteer tomatillo plant at first I thought this was a pepper plant but that is definitely a tomatillo plant so I'm excited for that and then we've got watermelons right here these, these where's it at that plant these plants right here are watermelon plants those are the sugar baby watermelons and they are really, really, really good. Okay, to finish up this garden tour, we're over here in the container garden area. Banana plant that I thought I lost over the winter is actually really doing good. The main stalk is dead, but it's put on these side shoots and they're doing good, actually. Looking over here, look at all this fig growth. I mean, look at this. The figs this year are just growing at an insane rate i haven't seen any fruit yet not since january when i harvested them way too soon but but these fig plants have just taken off i mean just taken off like and what's crazy is you can't even see the lemon plant that's in this, the lemon plant that's in here. Because there's a lemon plant. There's a lemon tree right there. That has lemons starting to grow on it. But if you didn't know that, looking over here, you'd think it was just a sea of figs. That is amazing. I love it. Swinging over is where we get into the citruses. They're all doing good. They're all alive. Let me just put it that way. Some are really producing well. Like this Calamondin of course is always producing and then this lemon tr or this lime tree right here 
is doing good. I mean, look at all the look at all the growth on here. But that's really it. Nothing else is real. Oh no, this one's producing. No, see that? I didn't even notice that. I always think everything is this calamanda. Yep. No, that's a lime. That's a lim, uh, That's a lime right there. So, and then these are the two blueberry bushes that I just transplanted in that last video, right there. Doing doing good. Uh, doing really good. All right, everybody. So that's the garden tour for April first, twenty twenty three. Everything out here so far that I've planted, yeah, I'm really excited about, and I'm I'm actually really pleased with. I do have some sections that I still need to plant stuff in that are just wide open because I haven't figured out what I'm going to put in them yet. Um, I'm thinking of starting okra early, like now, because usually I'll plant okra in the in, in the summer, but I might start a variety of okra now. I haven't just maybe I will. I don't know. What do you all think? If I should start okra now, drop a comment. Tell me I'm crazy or I should do it. I don't know. Um, but I'll definitely accept the comments and the feedback. But yeah, everyone. So hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it, like it, which is the same thing as giving it a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if anything, I hope you all are preparing for your spring, wherever you are. Um, obviously down here in zone 9A, spring is sprung. We're rocking and rolling here. I have a lot of work to do still out here, which is gardening. Gardening is work, that is for sure. And if it's a passion of yours, then it's not really work, right? So, everyone take care, God bless. Continue to shine bright and harvest hard. And I'll be talking to y'all again real soon. <laughs> Bye. When I bought those potato starts, when I bought those potato seed start, when I bought those potato, when I bought those seed potatoes, I also you don't follow the single seed challenge on this channel. Please consider doing so. Um, I have a lot of fun with this challenge on this channel. I have a lot of fun with this challenge on this channel. And um, I try to make it as educational and exciting as possible. So also planted wasabi radish seeds all through this bed. The good thing about a wasabi radish for me is I hate it. I, I did it harvest taste and test or harvest and taste video on that thing and there's no chance i'll ever eat it again Ugh. no 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 not this guy